you are in the field of social life. I request our chief guest, Sir Alex, to kindly felicitate this humble personality. Please give a loud applause. They spend their whole life in the field of cooperation and social life. of reckoning. He was the former Sarpanch of Dawalim Dikarpal village Panchayat. He is a dynamic board of director in our society. He has spent too much of time and dedicated his life in field of cooperation and has motivated many youngsters to achieve greater heights. On completion of superannuation in this prestigious society, we request you sir Sulsidas We have gathered today to partake in the celebrations of this society whilst it completes 44 years service to society. The spirit behind the society and the reasons why societies per se were formed are tremendous. Way back in the early 1900, 1904 to be precise, the International Cooperative Alliance defined a cooperative as an autonomous association of persons united voluntarily to meet the common economic, social and cultural needs and aspirations through a jointly owned and democratically controlled enterprise. The cooperative movement in India was primarily born out of the distress and turmoil that prevailed in the last quarter of the 19th century. The industrial revolution had given a death blow to village industries and driven people to agriculture, the only avenue of employment and livelihood. The consequent subdivisions and fragmentations of land holdings had made agriculture an uneconomical proposition. Other factors such as the rigidity of land revenue collection, uncertainty of rainfall, and consequently lesser crop production compel, compel the farmers to approach money lenders. It was a heyday for these money lenders, for they advanced money either by purchasing the crop at the throw, throwaway price or by lending money while charging very high rates of interest. All these factors emphasize the need for provision of cheap credit through an alternative agency. Even before the formal cooperative structures came into being, through the passing of a law, the practice of the concept of cooperative activities were prevalent in several parts of India. Some of them were named as Devarai or Vanarai, Shit Funds, and by various other names. In various states, the movement picked up. In various states, governments or presidencies, as they were known at that time, tried to bring in laws. However, the first official step was taken 
when Sir William Wedderburn made, after the Deccan riots, the proposal for the establishment of agricultural banks as a remedy against rural indebtedness. Subsequently, the Co Cooperative Societies Act of 1912 was formed. Over the years, this act has been tweeted, has been tweaked. Over the years, amendments have been brought in. And over the years, we have today a robust act in place. The Government of India, under the leadership of our Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji, recognizing the importance of the cooperative movement, has taken up this movement seriously. He has handed over the portfolio of, the, of this movement to Sri Amit Shah, his trusted lieutenant, with the primary goal to assist the common man. The government has come out with various steps to encourage the formation of societies and to encourage the existence of these societies thereafter. Credit societies or otherwise could be registered, which societies which have this objective, of course, primarily without many issues or, or many compliances that would other be otherwise be necessary to form such bodies. The cooperative movement has gained importance. And that is why in today's times, the cooperative movement has become an integral part of the five-year plan year every, every five years. Our former Prime Minister, Sri Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, considers, considered cooperatives as one of the three pillars of democracy, the other two being the panchayat and the schools. This movement has been successful. This 